Hi everyone, welcome to our final considerations of this module. Um, where we're gonna have a nice chat about everything that we we talked about. And so, what do you think? Well, man, I like to I like to reinforce uh, the fact, you know, for us really to be give the seed a chance, you know. You know, we like to buy the seedlings, we like to buy it all in plastics and, and know how many we're gonna have for sure and that. Uh, I understand that maybe your local council, your local firm that's maybe financing this, this project where you're gonna plant and so you need, to, you need to keep certain standards because you know, they've recommended that you've planted with these seedlings in this spacing and all of that. Basically, my message is follow that. If you need to for your project, follow that. But uh, question yourself on it and say, you know, what would, what would it have been if I planted it with seeds? So there's one way of knowing, plant both. Plant it both ways. Do me that favor, do yourself that favor. Plant both ways and give yourself a chance of finding out really how, how when you follow, when you let nature do its work, how, you know, it's, it's so much wiser than us. Um, it's just one of those things where, at least in our region, uh, people that produce citrus and, you know, they, they produce oranges and that, they, they kind of hope for their trees to last 15 years. You know, they work for this so, so we can have 15 year production, really like a 10 year production, they wait around five years and then they harvest for about eight good years. Uh, give it a chance. If you plant that citrus with a seed, maybe that's gonna be your orange that's gonna last you 50 years. Maybe that's the one that's the roots has got a structure from, from the beginning. And if you really wanna graft it, plant the seed, let it come and graft this one. You know, plant the seed of, of, of the native orange that's gonna support that seed of, of that native uh, a grape, plant it, plant the seed of that grape and do the grafting on the spot, you know, rather than bringing in plastic and it's just, isn't it true, the, the, the seed just, the, the roots do, doesn't, doesn't work the same way. For sure. So it's something yeah. uh, I would like you guys really, really to, to bring that to your DNA, your, your farming DNA, work, work, work this way. Yeah, th there's no question that um, a seed that sprouted on the ground has a much more complete and, and um, vigorous root system than a, a plant that was grown inside a, a pot. For the rest of its life. For the rest of its life. The, the root system is never going to be the same. This makes a, a huge difference. Uh, that's why we advocate planting both a plant. We, we, and we do that. We're, we're not just telling you to do we, we actually do that. We plant grafted um, seedlings, right? We plant grafted plants that were grown into plastic bags and we plant seeds on its side because we want to have that, that first production early on. We want that. But we also want that long lasting plant with a very uh, broad genetic diversity. Um, but now I'd like to, to go back to everything that we talked about, um, really summarize all the principles that we mentioned and, and really put them together so mm -hmm. that we have an understanding of the whole, right? Mm -hmm. um, first of all, we, we talked about optimization of resources, which is that basic thing that you can apply to everything and all the other principles, they actually, I would say that they come from this, they come from optimizing resources because stratification is a means for optimizing sunlight and space succession is a means for optimizing the usage Water. of land during time everything is an optimization of a specific resource resource yeah so really consider that and, and really bring Put, put that this has to become second thought you know everything bring around your DNA. you bring into your DNA exactly <laughs> everything around you is resource and we can use it to produce um, 
then we moved up to um, succession of species and stratification. And these two, they go hand in hand. I like to think, um, w when you think about stages of succession, right? you've got those pi pioneer plants, you've got those secondary plants, and you've got the, the primary forest. And if you take a picture of each of these uh, moments, each of these have its own stratification. So in the pioneer plants, we've got the emergent plant, we've got the high layer plant, we've got the medium layer plant, we've got the understory plant. When we move up to the secondary forest, we've got the emergent plant, we've got the high layer plant, we've got the medium, we've got the understory plant. When we go up to primary forest, we've got that same design. So that's basically how the system is structured. And what changes from one picture to the other is only which species occupy each layer. So for example, in this first picture on my very early pioneer species, I could have corn as my emergent plant. It's going to be the emergent plant for five months, but then it's going to be substituted by a papaya, for example, which will then be substituted by an eucalyptus, which will then be substituted by a mahogany. So we've got groups of species in each moment, and these groups are consortiated in a way that each species occupy each layer. Yeah, and you can really, you can see this happening really quick with, with a veg, uh, with a companion plant in, in, in your veg bed. This is where you, you gotta play with this, you gotta understand it, you gotta get it wrong. Uh, this, is, this is where you gotta have the first results, you know. And we really recommend for you to use that kind of spacing that you do in, uh, in the monoculture. You know, we, we're not asking to space things out so we can fit them in. We're asking you to find the right species that will occupy the, the space and time that that uh, companion planting allows you. You know, it really is a case where, you know, your rocket, you know, with 40 days you're harvesting your rocket. So it, it really is a tool to, to fill in the blank spaces. And, and if you've planted that rocket, then you've planted your weed. You know, that's, that's got to occupy, that's the weed. And if you don't plant the rocket, the weed's got to grow in its place. That's when you've got to have, you know, invading plants because there's nothing there. So nature's got to try to fill that in. So if you fill it in with service plants that you've got to harvest, you know. Uh, so this is, this is uh, the, the challenge and, you know, you've got to get it wrong. You know, you've got to try things. And, but it's the beauty, out of three, four, uh, species you tried, you, you, one of them you might get wrong and then, you know, but you get better at it, you know, and then you start, oh, I like these two work well together, you can repeat that, you know. Uh, I like, I like generally having things that's going to cover the soil, you know, something that's going to come up, you know, uh, something that's going to work underneath the roots, so really try fill those gaps in so that the weed doesn't come and fill it in for you and then, you know, we, we, we're playing catch up, we, you know, and people are even going to be thinking now about spraying things and <laughs> exactly. all sorts of mad solutions. Yeah, it's really important to understand that when you plant crops together, um, repeating and reinforcing what you just said, by planting lettuce and adding radish and carrots with it, I'm not going to harvest less lettuce and I'm not going to harvest less radish and I'm not going to harvest less carrot and I could even add corn with it and I'm not going to harvest less corn and I could even add cassava with it and I'm not going to harvest the less only thing cassava. that's going to be less is the input exactly <laughs> the only thing that's going to be less is the input it's going to be one bed instead of three beds it's going to be one exact amount of manure instead of three amounts of manure it's all about understanding how much shade a plant likes you know, which plants like to have somebody on top of them and what's that plant's life cycle. So going back to my example, if you plant lettuce and radish with 25 days you're harvesting radish, it's exactly the moment when lettuce is going to start really forming its head. And at that point, the carrot is still this size, so nobody bothers it. 
When you harvest the lettuce, the carrot is this size. And it's about the time it's going to start, open yeah. up its foliage mm. and completely covering the soil. <clears throat> so you harvest it. So one plant mm. s occupies that place that the other one just left behind. So it's In that always a substitution. Space of time. Um, you know, so it's really important for us to consider this. Not because the next plant is necessarily coming, because if you don't take this one out, it's going to it's gonna dominate. So you really got to harvest what you've planned to harvest within that, that certain time. And also, I don't know if we've spoken about this, but really the information of a plant that's dying, you know, if that radish, if you don't harvest it and it was, you know, at its prime, it's going to start giving you a different information now, like an old information, an information of, of a plant that's coming to its end. And that's really going to interfere with the information of the lettuce that's still in the growing and, and, and the carrot that's in a growing rhythm. Because you know, this kind of information, these kind of hormones, these influences, this energy, they're interacting. So you must take out what you plan to harvest. Even if you rip it out and you lay it there to cover the soil. But if you leave it there, it's gonna, it's gonna be the old plant next to a plant that's new and it's not gonna give the right information. So we really need to be pruning what we, what's gone You've taken it out, you know, anything that's left, rip it out, layer it down so that the new and the fresh, so it's, because we're talking about, it's, it's time to boom, it's time to grow. So everything needs to grow. Remember when we said we're going to restart the system so everything can grow together again? It's the same in all sorts of time scales. Yeah, that, that, that's definitely a very important point. Um, we, we have no idea um, how many interactions and how much communication happens in between plants and not only in between plants but in, in between plants and microorganisms both beneficial and uh, microorganisms that causes disease and also between plants and insects luckily more and more studies are coming out on on this regard and the fact of the matter is that plants, they, just like we as human beings, can see a papaya or an orange and realize if it's digestible for us mm -hmm. or not. If it's completely rotten and smelly, we know, okay, this is not digestible for me. If I eat it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have diarrhea. Um, insects know that too. So if they see a plant and they receive its communication through senses, through smell, um, they know if that plant is digestible or not. And basically, the healthy plant is not digestible. And the plant that's not healthy is digestible because it's, it's, it, it doesn't have uh, so many complex molecules, which, and these are not digestible by insects. And so we really can go up to the point of affirming that plants call insects to attack them and diseases as well so because they they release the information and this is what we're, we're talking about here because if you've got a plant that already doesn't have its space anymore it's not its time its time is gone okay it's getting old it doesn't have that vigor it once had so it starts um, releasing all this information of the K, all this information of senescence, and this brings unbalance to the whole system. It's not, it's not healthy and firm anymore, so it's it's a it's a target to other uh, certain plagues, and then maybe you're attracting this. You know, there's the, the, the a whole large knock-on effect on this. Exactly, that's that's most certainly, and. But once we, we get the timing, I, I always thought that agroforestry is a, is a lot about timing. Because mm -hmm. you really have the timing to take out one plant so that the other one can bloom. Mm -hmm. You really have the timing to prune mm -hmm. so that you have the, uh, the, the perfect amount of sunlight mm -hmm. for your fruit trees. You really have the timing to plant everything together so that they come together. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's... This is very, very, very obvious. You know, you, you can know, do you can do experiments easily. When we plant something, when there's something beside it, which is already growing, it doesn't work. 
If you plant them together, it works beautifully. But if one of them is already partially developed, yeah. it just doesn't work. The other we one spoke still about this earlier and early. in one of the classes about the influence of an older tree. You know, cut it down. Don't let something with with it. it's an influence. It's an old tree. It's got a different information. It's not the growing. It's not the new. So cut it down. Use that matter. You know, it's gonna it's gonna donate this matter with a lot of love. I mean, it's it's fulfilling to help a whole forest comes. One time, uh, maybe you can find that one large tree, one canopy tree, uh, is, is stalling the growth of a whole forest. So yeah, oh, but it's beautiful, but it's like what we said, it's not a museum. It's beautiful, my granddad, okay, it's gotta, with a lot of love, it's gotta return to the soil, all that energy, and help a whole forest come now. So it really gave back, it really paid and, and you know what, it's going to sprout and it's going to sprout beautifully with everything else and it's going to still be the chosen one, I bet you. Yeah, you can really understand and, and notice once you start really observing how plants, um, once they reach a certain age, if left to their regular growth uh, without pruning, without any sort of management, um, it really has come to a point where they you, you you can see that they've reached a limit you know they're not going to go more and and they they stop having that blush green color and that strong vegetative growth and give them a second chance exactly we don't have to be as radical as taking them down you know good pruning good canopy pruning really does the job you can really recover um, old orchards Mm -hmm. And this this is an amazing way to recover old and, and enrich old orchards. Mm -hmm. um, I really love the possibility, you know, when, when you get that old orchard that your grandfather had. Here in Brazil, they usually, um, we've got these many mango trees, huge mango trees with open wide crowns mm -hmm. and nothing grows underneath. And you've got all that matter organized in branches and leaves and that's just feast for the soil and once you prune that back and you put all that on the soil you can go yeah, anything all the light you come want in, all that you, matter exactly you all can bring energy. in coffee underneath you can put a uh, sugar apple underneath you could have oranges Cacao, underneath. everything anything you want will that's produce it. that's it so uh let's wrap it up you know let's wrap it up let's because we have up. nothing for the webinar we'll nah, we've got plenty something. for you don't worry exactly. uh, so but that will be coming up soon and uh all the best. Thanks for sticking around with us. Once more, don't forget your questions for us. Uh, we'll thank you for watching and we'll see each other in the webinar. Bye bye.